17 years of age, she's still producing the best calf. That's why your bull must be in good condition. <laughs> this is really interesting. Everybody loves getting twins. Yeah. Twins are a problem. So if you do everything right, you get good. You get it right. Yeah. They, they require maintenance. Every animal requires maintenance, especially in our exactly. winter season. So you call it a mistake? It's For me, it's a mistake. You don't because want I, I'm, I'm focused on being a pure breeder. So these bulls are the bulls that will be up for sale this year. All of them? Yeah. If you take this cow here, she's a typical Thule cow. Okay. If you look at her, her udder. Yeah. She's got small little teats. And she's got a nice bag there, which is well attached and all that. Yeah. So there, she is going to be a good mother. Oh, so you can produce, tell? Yeah, she'll be a good mother and she'll produce a decent amount of milk in there to grow her calf out nicely. Oh wow. And she is most probably pregnant. I have no doubt in this condition that she's not pregnant. And if anything were to be in that condition and not pregnant, yeah. then there's a fault with the reproductive system inside. How do you fix that? You don't. <laughs> goes to the butcher. We have our own breeds here in Zimbabwe and yes. they do well in our conditions. Would you encourage people to, you know, import uh, different breeds from out there to, to Zimbabwe or Africa in general? Um, no. <laughs> Why? <laughs> no, I mean, I imported seven uh, heifers from Namibia oh, okay. Okay. in December. The December that's just gone by now. Yeah. Um, I'm a seed stock producer. Oh. I'm introducing new genetics into the country. I think it's good. Bring in one or two bulls, bring them into the country to introduce new bloodlines, etc., okay. etc., et so that our commercial farmers can benefit from that. Okay. Um, but I wouldn't recommend everybody doing that. No, you'll oh. kill the industry in in this country. Oh. Yeah. Really? Yeah, well, you're supporting them and you're not supporting the local people, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, definitely. But people feel, and I was the same when I first started, I rushed off to South Africa to, to get the best genetics yeah, from there. Exactly. We've actually got the best genetics here in Zimbabwe. The national bull sale that is held every year yeah. and all the different breeds that go there yeah. are comparable or, as, or better than what comes from, say, South Africa, Botswana, or Namibia. Our cattle in this country are equal or better, and they adapted to our country. You're doing animals as of now. Is there going to come a time that we see you do crop? Cropping? Like, no. Why? It's not my thing. It's not your thing. <laughs> Anything in this country done well. Yeah. It could be cooking. It could be whatever. If you do whatever you do well, you will do well. Wow. That's it. I really liked what you did when we were coming into your farm. Uh, you saw your, your neighbor's cows and there were papers and you give them advice. Yeah, well, they're my that, neighbors. You help each other. If you don't help each other, then when I have a problem, yes. I can't call on them. Yeah, we should. And that's very important. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for mentioning that. And uh, I, I really liked what you did. Because I mean, people have to learn, people have to care for each other. Yeah, no, that's important, eh? <laughs> that's really important. Yeah. I mean, what, what's your advice to, to farmers out there? Those who want to venture into cattle farming, what's your advice to them? Um, you obviously have to secure a piece of land. Yeah. So let's assume they've done that. Then I would look for people in their area oh, okay, okay. who are selling cattle. Okay, okay. Yeah. And buy those cattle yeah. from your same area. They are they are adapted to the conditions. The conditions of your area. Okay. Oh. Then from there now. If you got Shona type animals, yeah. Then you need to look at investing in a a, a good bull. The best bull that you can afford. Oh. If you cut a corner in buying cheap bulls, yeah. your herd is not going to progress 
well you're going to pay for it in the future you pay for it in the future <laughs> your, that bull is it becomes like 80 percent of your herd when i get a stud bull yeah i keep it for two maximum three years only only then i sell it no matter how good it is doesn't matter how good it is i have an exceptional tuli bull that we yeah imported from south africa yeah um and he sired nearly 75 to 80 calves in his time with me. I've collected his semen. Oh, okay, okay. And, I, and I'm selling him this year. This year? This year he will be up for sale. And that bull is, is an exception. We'll, we will find him and show him if, if we can, show him to the people. But and people he might be introducing a fault. Oh. Into my herd. Okay, okay. Which I can't see now. I'm loving his calves at the moment. Maybe his heifers struggle to, to give birth. They've got a narrow pelvis. They've got... It can be anything. It's, especially in the Brahmins, maybe they produce those big, heavy teats and udders. And the, and the calf, when it's first born, struggles to drink. Okay. If you keep them for five years, you've introduced a problem for five years. You know, people have been saying that our own breed here in Zimbabwe, they produce better meat. Is, is that true? The Thule is renowned for having good intramuscular fat. Oh, okay. okay. In, the, in the meat. Oh, okay. okay. And so that is, uh, is an attractive thing, especially as a butcher. That is an attractive trait in the animal. You have cows that have been giving birth 10 out of 10, like 10 years. Yeah. Every year. Yes. Most of the cows that we see in the raw areas, they barely do that. Like, what's your secret? What Nutrition. is it? Nutrition. <laughs> That's it? That's it. Wow. That one is pregnant, isn't it? Yeah, no, she'll be pregnant. So, but she's got a calf as well, right now. Oh. Yeah. How did that happen? Like, uh, well, <laughs> let's go to the birds and the bees. <laughs> <laughs> and then all these grass seeds, what, what? That is now the carbohydrates. Oh, okay, okay. Which put on the fat. That's why animals get fat at this time of the year because they're taking in the sufficient protein and, and they've got all the carbohydrates to put the fat on. But then you need to try and keep them. Oh, okay. And when the grass dries off, yeah. there's no more protein in the grass. So you now supplement the protein. Oh. That's when the protein comes in, like the supplement. Yes, that's when you, you give a, a high protein uh, lick, a block, 36% protein. It's got a lot of urea in. People must be careful. Yeah. Urea can kill the cow if there's too much. Oh. Like, or if it's they too get, much. If it's too much, they get bloat. You have to maintain. Yeah, well, the blocks are made with lots of salt in them so that the salt prevents them from eating too much. I I'm think. trying to get them pregnant before the rainy season. But I, I can afford to do that because I'm a pedigree breeder. And I put everything, everything that I earn from my cattle, I put it back into the cattle. You invest back. We put it all back. Wow. That's why they look like this. And they're really healthy. Yes. We've been fortunate now. Every year Zimbabwe Herd Book give out awards. Oh, okay. And they, one of the awards they give out is for the most fertile herd uh there's four there's four categories small medium large and very large yeah. herds so we we fall into the small i think small or medium if you ever won i've won it for the past two years in a row you deserve it because yeah. they're really healthy yeah we, uh, and it's the most fertile herd so we mm. like getting the award but it's not important okay them being in this condition is important you barely see ticks on them Yes, um, our neighbours are losing cattle to January disease. Yeah. W touch wood, we haven't lost, but we dip. We used to dip every week. Now, at this time of the year, I'm doing it every five days. Every five days you dip them? Yeah, we try. Sometimes I'm busy on the fifth day, so we'll dip them on the sixth day. But it's, it's within a week. At this time of the year, it's within a week every week. It seems, is it, you know, like farming in general, do you think that it's really profitable in Africa? Let's talk about this. Farming has been the backbone of our economy as Africa in general. I mean, it seems like a lot of people are drifting away from farming. 
It's hard. It's hard? Yeah. Okay. And now the government have introduced VAT okay. on animal live sales. Okay. That's going to kill the industry right there. Oh, how? It's 15 it's 15 percent more expensive now when someone comes to buy your animal yes if you are vet registered yeah then you can claim the vet back and 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 all those things uh, we still haven't fully grasped it but okay somebody who's in the rural areas yes he won't have a an itf 263 exactly the buyer is instructed to remove 30 percent oh so okay. if the animal's going for 600 dollars yeah it's sold for 600 the farmer used to see 600 he yeah. will see 400 now Yo. And 200 now goes to the government i mean that's the, that's another thing why people are drifting away from farming it's not it's yes what i've said is not a hundred percent accurate yeah always yeah. Around it, the first five thousand dollars. But if a farmer takes his ten animals to the market, yeah. And he gets eight hundred dollars an animal, that's eight thousand dollars. But if he doesn't have an ITF two six three, the auctioneer is instructed to remove thirty percent and pass that on. That man has now gone broke. It's a loss. He's broke. He, he, no one can sustain that. You must now get registered and what, 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 what. But he comes from an area where there's no internet and, and definitely, yeah, yeah, need to be addressed. Yeah, I hope they address it. We, yeah, we are. Because I'm telling trying you, to do that. Farming, it's, it's everything in Africa. Yeah. That's what I've noticed. It's really interesting as of now because, like, a lot of people are now recognizing how powerful farming is. You know, back then, 10 years ago, people were really, like, going to the Western countries and they, they were leaving this behind. People must get the mindset that they must not become cattle multipliers. Okay, what do you mean by that? They mustn't just... Yeah. They need to breed quality. Not just From breed, their breed. quality always sells. Quality what? Will always sell oh. at a high price. Wow. Like I said earlier, that guy who wants to start farming, yeah. go and get heifers from your area. They are adapted to your area. You bring in a, the best bull you can afford and that will improve upon your herd slowly. But you can't go and buy the same quality bull the next time. You have to upgrade to a higher quality. In your case, it's three years. No matter how good the bull is. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm always... But I use a lot of my own... Um, okay, okay. My own bulls are as good as what I can get from elsewhere. One, they are adapted to my conditions. Yeah, yeah. And two, we've brought in very good bloodlines. Okay. And so we are continuing with those bloodlines, but with my own bulls. Mr. Reed, it seems like it's not about quantity when it comes to breeding. It's about quality. Quality. Okay. Quality. This calf here. Yeah belongs to that cow behind that cow is a first calving heifer she was born in 2020 2020 yes i'm not saying she's pregnant but i'm pretty sure she is so she produced that calf and she's pregnant you know it's really interesting for me because like it's a, it still has its calf yeah and it's it's it could be pregnant right yes now. how because <laughs> well it's 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 nutrition Okay. It's nutrition. That's the bottom line. It, it's been given the enough nutrition. I'll say this this year the season, although it, it, it's been a dry season really. Yeah. Dry for cattle is very good. As long as they've got the grass and there's plenty of grass, then they do well. When it's raining and raining and raining, you'll find none of your cows will cycle. Oh, okay. They're not going to cycle. <laughs> With my heifers, yeah, I will put them to the bull probably... July, August this, this year. year. This year. It's a little bit early than I usually do, but I think they've grown out enough. I will give them two months. Two months. To get pregnant. The ones that don't get pregnant yeah. in the two months, but get pregnant, say, three, four months. After. After being exposed to the bull. Yeah. Those are the ones that make my auction now. That's why your bull must be in good condition. Because he's not, he's not eating now. All the others will be eating. 
he's busy chasing this one away, that one away, that one. He doesn't get time to eat and they lose a lot of weight when they... I've the, noticed. Yeah, <laughs> but the reason, so that bull has had a vasectomy. We've we called the vet, you knock him out and you, okay. you cut the, the, the tube that sends the semen. So he's firing blanks. He's firing blanks, in other words. Okay. But if I don't have him here, yeah. these ones that were on heat, mm -hmm. they, they know the bulls are over there. They'll go over there oh! and they'll be covered by a, a bull. Now, I don't know who the father is. We can find out through the DNA, but that's not... It's a long process. That's not no, that's not the sire I want for her. I, I will selectively choose in the beginning AI. This bull, that bull. This, this, this cow has a problem, say, doesn't have a big enough hindquarter or yes. whatever, whatever the fault may be. Yeah. Um, I choose a bull that is strong in that area, hoping that the offspring will inherit the good traits from the cow and the good traits from the bull. Thank you. To improve upon the breed. But they're only two years. Yeah, well, yeah, they, they'll be two in... In July. July, August, September. Okay, okay. And then this was the first year that I weaned at eight months of age. Yeah. I seen one that has horns and it's a small yes. one. Yes. Now that's a dairy animal. Oh. My wife has six or seven dairy cows at home which we milk. Wow. Yeah. Just for milk. And, and so um yeah that, that, that one came from there. We raise a lot of well not a lot. Like this black one here is yes. from a dairy cow. Yeah. Uh, if we have a problem with a cow, it dies, yeah. or, or twins. We get twins every now and then. Oh. I will take a twin and raise it at home. Oh. And I let the mother raise one. One. Why? Because it will raise two poor calves yeah. rather than one good calf. So let her raise one good one and we'll raise one good one at home that, that, that's much better that way yes i actually don't like twins <laughs> twins are a problem everybody loves getting twins yeah twins are a problem <laughs> you can you can see on his testes there yeah those are the stitches from when oh the vet did the operation okay. yeah and we chose a bull like that because he's small he's I'm never going to sell a bull like that to somebody. He's not good enough. If you compare him to what we had yes. back there. So he's a very good, we call that a teaser bull. So that's his job. His job is to prevent these ones from going there. To, to look for a bull because he, you see, he's herding them. That one left the herd. He brings it back to the herd now. It's really interesting. I mean, yeah. if you had to study the behavior and that yeah. kind of stuff, it's really interesting. Yeah, so that there, she, you're not going to pick it up on the video, but she's yeah. going to come back in and he's going to follow her back in. And another one will walk off that way and then you'll run around and you'll... Yeah. Okay, if you yeah. ever crossed, like between Brahma and... Uh, Brahman and Tuli. Tuli. Yeah, we get mistakes coming. So you call it a mistake? It's For me, it's a mistake. You don't because want I, I'm I'm focused on being a pure breeder. Oh, yeah, I yeah. understand. But I recommend that cross because these are slightly bigger animals yes. than the tulis. The tulis are very very fertile. Now you start crossing those, mm. you you get the fertility from your tuli. You get a, a bigger animal from animal from Brahma. from the Brahmin, and you end up with what we call hybrid vigor and they are very good it's a very good base okay for That's your for your cow herd these bulls are are, are guaranteed wow yeah if they go to a farmer and they fail to produce calves yes then i will replace that bull free of charge oh so you do a follow-up yeah well, if they come back to me yes. and they say, this bull's not working. Yes. And then we go through a series of questions and what have you. Obviously, it's necessary. Yeah. And if the person doesn't have a problem with me coming to take the DNA of the calves. Yes. Because often a bull will work at night time only. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I did not know. Yeah, that. no, especially with Brahmin. Tuli, they don't seem to care, but 
but uh, the the brahmin they're very specific they tend to work at night time and and then and then the herdsman hasn't seen it covering the cow so this is Mishak Chigo, he's my foreman, he's the guy in charge of all these cattle. Oh, okay. He's the guy that actually knows the cattle better than I do. <laughs> yeah. Sure. And there isn't, um, if, if a cow is having a calving difficulty yeah. and he can't get it out, yeah. then the vet can't get it out. <laughs> unless they do a cesarean. No, For so, sure. Yeah, yeah. So no, he's very good. Um, oh, and he knows his animals, he knows this cow belongs to this calf and what what um yeah he's passionate about it as well oh, yeah that's wonderful.